This is Good Friday. And on the evening of Good Friday, uh, here at First Presbyterian Church in Lake Placid, we usually hold a, uh, one of my favorite services of the year. The hymns and music uh, of that service, the prayers, the readings, the scriptures are singularly focused on one thing, that thing which transformed human history, that thing which was the fulfillment of the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament, which they all pointed forward, that thing to which the New Testament scriptures point clearly to that redemption that was accomplished for us in the cross of Jesus Christ. The Good Friday service is the most somber service of the year. The cross at the front of the sanctuary is usually draped in black. The music is not festive. The readings urge us to consider the terrible cost of our full redemption, to understand it was a debt that we could never ever hope to repay ourselves. Hymns which have a concluding verse that uh, focuses on the resurrection stop before that verse. When the service concludes, there's no benediction. There is no good word or word of blessing. There's no postlude on the organ. There are no greetings and hugs which so characterize our gatherings together and which we are missing so much. There are a few words spoken as people exit. And I find that for me, immediately the longing begins because we know the story. We know that it is Good Friday and that Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary, that he was hastily buried in a borrowed grave without even time to properly prepare his body, and that the enemies of God thought that the battle had been won. And the battle had been won, just not by them. Jesus says from the cross, it is finished. A complete redemption for the people of God. So from Friday evening all through the day on Saturday, I am eagerly longing for Easter Sunday. To gather on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, and to celebrate the victory of the cross which is confirmed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Or as John Owen described it in his incomparable work on the cross and redemption, it was the death of death and the death of Christ. Redemption was not only made possible, it was accomplished. But we will not be gathering on this Good Friday. So we are thankful that we can meet uh, via uh, this uh, opportunity provided to be together on the website. Pray with me, and we're going to read from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Father, we thank you for your word, inspired through the prophet Isaiah some 750 years before Jesus, the Messiah, was born into this earth. As we read and think on your word this Good Friday, bless it, we pray, for our hearing and our growth in Christ our longing to celebrate the resurrection and the hope that is ours in Christ. We pray in his name, amen. The word of God from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53. If you have your Bibles, I would invite you to follow along as we read together. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. 
like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Amen. The message of the cross has embraced and treasured by Christians as our assurance that the wages of sin, that is death, have indeed been paid in full by Jesus and his work on the cross. He is the Messiah. He fulfilled this crystal clear prophecy through the prophet Isaiah. The message of the cross is it addresses the subject of death, something that has uh, become front page news every single day during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But which is nonetheless something that will be faced by every one out of every one of us. It has a personal dimension for ourselves and for those we love. One of the elders of the church who was serving at the time that I was called here many years ago, who served as the clerk of the session for years, and his death had requested that we sing his favorite hymn. It was a hymn about the cross. And as a still young pastor uh, at the time, it had a profound effect uh, on me as I considered the personal and powerful implications of the cross and the lives of saints who took the time to really contemplate it and apply the meaning to themselves. This song, this hymn, was inspired uh, as the writer was visiting in the coast of South China and he saw a bronze cross on a wall standing by itself at one time it had been a cathedral there, but it had been destroyed long ago by a typhoon. And all that remained was the cross. This is the hymn he wrote. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. When the woes of life o'ertake me, hopes deceive and fears annoy. Never shall the cross forsake me. Lo, it glows with peace and joy. When the sun of bliss is beaming, light and love upon my way, from the cross the radiant streaming adds more luster to the day. Bane and blessing, pain and pleasure by the cross are sanctified. Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time. All the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. The message and power of the cross continues to draw us to look to God totally and exclusively for our redemption. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the Lamb of God who gave himself for us on the cross. Whatever may come, the cross of Jesus Christ towers over the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. That means that whatever calamities befall us, personally, nationally, or globally, all of scripture, the light of sacred story, 
ultimately takes us to the cross. Bane and blessing, pain and pleasure by the cross are sanctified that God is at work in all things for the ultimate good of his people, ultimately for our salvation and for his own glory. While I knew this hymn of the cross, I've been thankful over the decades since Al's passing that he brought it to light, that it was important to him. He wanted his family and his church family to focus on the cross as we gave thanks to God for his life. Again, just last year, I was at the home of a precious lady whose husband had succumbed to cancer after a long and valiant fight. And there in her home was a cross. It was made by hand by an artisan in North Carolina, making use of metal that was roughly welded together around the base of a rock. And the word picture was powerful to me. A bent, plain cross, standing erect, on the base of a rock. There was nothing pretty about the cross of Calvary. And the one who died on that cross is described by the prophet Isaiah as we just heard from Isaiah 53. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom mid men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. And so this plain cross, fashioned around a rock, begged a story. The couple had found it in a shop in North Carolina. His favorite hymn was another well-known cross hymn, the old rugged cross. And so they had purchased it, and they had brought it to their home here in Lake Placid. Sometime after the service, my wife and I were surprised and honored to receive uh, a cross from her. She had ordered it from the same place in North Carolina, and now it occupies a place in our living room at home. The cross of Christ has personal and powerful implications for us as we contemplate its meaning. This is the cross that was fashioned by that artisan in North Carolina. The cross is powerful. Jesus Christ fulfilled everything that was needed to declare it is finished by his work on the cross. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. He shall bear their iniquity. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. The moderator of the ARP Church, Dr. Leslie Holmes, whom we hosted here in Lake Placid this past February, is joined with leadership of sister denominations in calling Christians this Good Friday to a day of prayer and fasting before the Lord, crying out to God to heal our land to heal our world, and particularly as we deal with this COVID-19 virus, but even to the deepest needs of our world. And reflecting on the cross of Christ, if you have a hymn book in your home, I would encourage you to look up hymns that deal with the cross and reflect on what they declare about the central importance and the incomparable power of the cross. If you don't have a hymn book, Google hymns of the cross and read those and listen to them and sing them. And then look at the songs in the light of the scripture to see if they accurately portray the story and the meaning of the cross. After we pray, I invite you to listen to a recording by Stuart Townend and Keith and Kristen Geddes' beautiful and powerful song, The Power of the Cross. 
And as you listen, look at Isaiah 53. See how they pick up on what the cross means. How it fulfilled so unmistakably what Jesus did on the cross that Good Friday to accomplish our full redemption. Things looked hopeless on Good Friday. But we know that Sunday is coming. I'm going to be making use as we pray on the prayer guide that's provided. You can find this on our website under resources and announcements uh, to lead us. There's several resources to help us as we would pray and fast on this Good Friday uh, and join with brothers and sisters throughout the nation and even the world in this call, call out to God. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for the cross and the victory of our redemption that was won not by any merit or anything that we have done or could do but solely by the merit of the one who humbled himself and came and gave his life on the cross of Calvary ransom many sinners make us saints Father we call out to you today as our nation and our world is yet in turmoil we pray that in your power and mercy that you would end the coronavirus pandemic we pray that our government leaders will be protected from the virus and they will have patience and wisdom and civility and compassion to deal with the problems that are facing our country and even our world in this perilous time we pray for the safety of the members of the medical community and we pray that they will be able to care for the sick with wisdom and kindness and with stamina we pray that the sick will be healed and restored we pray for your protection on those who are most vulnerable. We pray for the supplies that are needed for our medical community to better serve, both taking care of themselves and those that are sick. Lord, we pray for the many who are grieving, for lost friends and family members through this pandemic. We pray for the poor, we pray for all those who have been hurt by this economic downturn, for employees and the self-employed and small business owners and big businesses and churches and charities, for your provisions. We pray for those who have lost jobs, that they would soon be able to return to work. Lord, we need your help at every level, including for our economy. We pray for those hurting people that might be inclined to turn to drug abuse or alcohol abuse or domestic abuse. We pray that you would deliver and that you would protect. We pray for those who are quarantined and sheltered in place. They might not despair in loneliness and isolation. Lord, we pray for our educational system from top to bottom that's just been in turmoil. We thank you for those who are laboring to continue education, both at home and through online provisions. Oh Lord, we pray that hearts would be turned in this time when we become aware so little that we control in this world. The brevity and uncertainty of life. That you would turn hearts once again towards you through Jesus Christ in repentance and faith. And that the people of God will love what you love. Desire what you promise. Lord, be pleased, we pray, with our prayers. We ask that you would answer them the infinite grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Thank you for joining me on this Good Friday. May God be with you as you join in the time of prayer and reflection and as we cry out to God for the mercy we need, knowing that he is ever merciful.